All right, Kings fans, so we're back with Woo! another episode of the Kings Cast postseason roundtable. I'm excited to be here. It's like we never left. Literally, we did not leave. So here we go with 112. I'm Dennis Bernstein. I'm Charles E. Smith Jr. Gan Matsuda. I'm Matt Wright. Dave Joseph. I'm John Moncrief. I'm John Hovind, a.k.a. The Mayor. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's move on to next season uh, and a little bit into the off season here uh, with a couple of questions. We'll throw out some names. Ryan Smith, Jared Stoll uh, are going to be in contract years next Willie season. Willie Mitchell. Uh, as is Willie Mitchell. Well, not so much Willie Mitchell, but Ryan Smith and Jared Stoll, components of this team, as well as Michael Hans, who's unrestricted. Uh, what are their futures as LA Kings? Uh, none of them will be on the team in two years. Correct. Smith won't, Smith at six. Look, you had to make the Ryan Smith deal at the time. Yes. yes. Move, but yes. now, six point two million for that guy's the first left wing is not right. working. Right. It's not going to work. He's a number two. Um, Stall. You can replace Stall, and you replace Stall with Braden Shen. Okay. Um, who's the other cat? Mitchell. 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 Chili Willie. I'm not sure that Mitchell comes back. I mean, he, he got he got paid. I don't know if he wants to come back. That Depends how they do next season. That might be his decision, anyways. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He may not come back. Or well, maybe not maybe maybe and, might be ready to play by the end. Sure. I don't. Well, 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 I don't yeah. want to hear about yeah. Michael Hansen being resigned. Oh, that, that I don't want to hear about it because last year we sat in a room with Terry Murray and I, I asked him about Froloff and he said, "Yeah, I want him back." Yeah, I want Ponacross. You want everybody back. Yeah, I want everybody back. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Michael Hansen is. I can't skate. I'm faster. Okay? The guy was just painfully slow out there. Yes, he's smart. Yes, he's a good teammate. Yes, he'll be a coach in the league one day, maybe like Ulf Samuelson. Yes, but he's terrific on He's, he's yeah. not coming yes, back. Michael, they've got, they've got the deep at center. Here. Michael Hanzus wants to come back. Michael Hanzus has said he wants to come back. He's willing to come back at a discounted rate. I have this from a good source mm -hmm. because he believes that this team will contend for a cup in the next two seasons. If, if Hanzus is yeah. willing to come back, hypothetically, but where's the spot on the there? team? At $2 million? Uh, no, I wouldn't where's his spot that? on the team? Without him, they might compete the for a cup. Yeah. I think that they'll miss him, and I don't think there's a spot for him. Yeah, that's what it comes down well, to. Trevor Lewis. Not a spot for him. They have like nine centers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> NHL, <laughs> NHL centers. No, no I, I understand. NHL that. centers. Okay, so where does he play next year? If Shen and, and Lakhtianov can't handle, handle the job? Yeah, if Lakhtianov's not ready, there's your answer right there. Lewis. You still have Trevor Lewis. You got Lewis and Richards. Lewis is playing on your fourth line. Richardson, but he could play. He's not a center for the whole way. Lewis, 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 I just don't know where he plays. Okay, so if Lewis is three, you have Hans Zeus, you have Hans Zeus and Stoll battling for second and fourth. I just don't see where Stoll and Hans Zeus is going to play. Hans Zeus is not going to Stoll your two. Hans Zeus is four, but you can't play a fourth line center two million just like you couldn't pay a second line center four million. Right? You bring him back at the minimum. If you bring him back in at the minimum, maybe. And listen, I, think, but I, think, and I think he's really valuable to the team, and that's the problem. He's great on faceoffs. I think he really helps the younger players. He yeah. teaches them with that stuff. And he's a great penalty killer. I know you don't think he's a very good skater. He's a great defensive player. He's a great defensive player. And, and their PK, which is one of the best in the league, takes a dip next year. Trevor, Trevor Lowe showed me a lot on PK. Yeah, that makes me think he can play the third to checking line center. Because he's fast. He's got wheels. He has no, his, you know, that I've heard, if I hear that his hands haven't caught up to his skates one more time, I'm going to throw up. I know that. I get it. But you're not I wrote that, that recently. But it's, yeah. thing to, right. it's one thing to be great in spurts, and it's another to night after night, game after game, to be able to go and put out that that's effort. Right. And that's the problem with some young players as they come in. You see them for maybe four or five games. Hey, he looks good. He could do this. Then once they've got the pressure, yeah, yeah. and they're supposed to be the man, <laughs> and they're playing a full season, you just watch them just slowly... Grind down to. Yeah, I'm Terry Murray, okay? I got a checking line center. I either want Jared Stoll, who's one of the fastest on the team, or Michael Hansus, who's one of the slowest on the team. Why would I play Hansus? I mean, it doesn't make sense. Or Trevor Lewis, you need speed in that checking line but, center because you got to keep up with a Pavelski. But if you're playing Murray's type of style, you're playing a grind slow type of game. He doesn't want it to be track me no matter what. He wants it to be both teams grinding it back and forth. And if you have. People, the big forwards in the West, they always talk about that. Mm -hmm. I like Hans Zeus grinding down with Thorntons and stuff like that. You know, if, if your checking line guy is going to be Lewis, that scares me a little bit if he's going to have to yep. deal with somebody as big as, you know, 6'5", Joe you, Thorton, Lewis, or Lewis can, Brian cannot, Gessler. Yeah, he cannot go against and him. That, that's why Lewis was moved up to the second line. He was exposed. But he was playing the second line, not the third line. That's the difference. Plus, he, he just, look, if you're going to go that route, then you get asked to that, knock that in the first round for the third year in a row. 
Uh, you got to change the tempo. You got to change the style of this team a little bit. Maybe not a revolution. Maybe a little bit of an evolution. And you start injecting these players. Well, in I don't know that Trevor but, Lewis is the answer to getting to the second round. Uh, <laughs> well, I think it's an overall concept of more team speed. But well, could well, you like divide, well, could could go almost with, divide the lines in half and say though that uh, Dennis to get to get beyond where they are that they need to fix the top two lines, which takes Hans out of the equation. Right. And if you fix that. Right, because then you would say, does it Hans yourself? You that's a good point. Too? I think well, but here's he's the thing: with help, you got ten guys for the the bottom six. Yeah. Yes. That's the that's the, great. That you know what that is again. That's you get in the playoffs, you get knocked out in the first round. It's the top six that are the issue. And you have Westgarth being one of those. And I think we can all we all can agree. <laughs> I, I think, think, think we all can agree. I think the only reason Ponikarowski was on this team at all is because Dean was locked in on Kovalchuk all summer as plan A and did not have a plan B and that was a knee jerk, oh my god, I need somebody on the third line reaction. And, and he was the only one left. And he was the only guy left out there in the market. That's the only reason but he you was know, on this Dennis, team. I'd agree and with you. Won't be back if you wanted to build a team of some, say like Nashville, where really, yeah, they're all, they're not the biggest guys in the world, but they're all very quick, where you have really, it's a swarm of gnats attacking you. You can do that. But when you get caught in the, in the middle, there's a problem there with the overall. Yeah. You have to build up the overall team speed, or you know you have to get guys that are right well, size fit. You, yeah, you, you want to talk about Nashville? Why did Nashville finish ahead of the Kings? Because Weber and Suter were better than Dowdy and Johnson. That was the key difference. That's true. How about they played? So the, the forwards are about the same. That too. The goaltenders are about the same. And it was like so a I mean, th that's where you get the difference. Is, is that those guys? Well, need it's to about team speed, though. When you look at team speed, then it's about teams, other teams, being able to keep up with you, as opposed to one or two fast okay. guys on the team. They have an overall speed when you watch Nashville play. One through fifteen, where the Kings rank in the Western team speed. Sixteen? <laughs> 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 who's the blazing skater? Who's the blazing skater on the Kings? Brad oh, Yanov. Right, fourth line player. Yeah. Stole. Injured player. Fourth line player. Maybe stole. All right, Kings fans, so that concludes uh, this installment of the postseason roundtable. Hope you enjoyed it, and uh, stay tuned for more. I'm Keith Kornelik. And I'm Chris Kalziewski. And thank you for watching Overtime. Bye, Kingscast! Wow, wow, wow.